yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thank you for so much for this opportunity. I'm gonna share my screen here um, for the presentation. Um, yeah, thank you so much everyone for coming. Um, I'm very passionate about this topic. I always love to talk about this. Um, so uh, let's get started. Um, so if you are here, I think I don't need to spend too much time on why corporate care is important for dogs and for us to make our life stress-free as well. And of course, make our dog's life stress-free. Um, so I'm just gonna tell a little bit the story behind how I started to use uh, corporate care, control niche exercises for corporate care. So this is my personal dog, Nico. He's active, he's very sensitive. Uh, he's a reason I start, uh, I become a trainer. Um, so we have been on and off working on corporate care for a few years now. Um, about one year in the pandemic, I got bored because I used to uh, compete with him in those work. I got bored because we're mostly staying home. So I wanted to work on something. Um, so I started a corporate care challenge on social media. So I called the 30 days of corporate care training on Instagram. As we go on, he made a lot of progress. So I just use, you know, normal contact conditioning, um, all the, um, you know, normal uh, training for corporate care. Um, but um, towards the end of that 30 days training, um, why he made a lot of progress, but I feel it's a little bit slow personally, but he suddenly had ear itchy. So I have to give him a ear drop. It happened before he will have like moisture or earwax that need a ear drops. But that time, for some reason, just very aversive to for him. So yeah, he wasn't ready, but I have to give to him. I think this happens about come to a lot of corporate care stuff that we have to kind of force this procedures on the dog before the dog is ready. So I had to give him ear job, and then that was very aversive. Not only he become very scared of ear job, he was scared of any bottle with solution. If I drink water, he got scared. And then even he got a, a scared of training in general. So if I walk up to him, he greeted me. But if I walk up to him and I give him a treat, he will go hide. So that was, a, that was a really bad. And then it took me a long time to kind of recover from that accident. But because of that, it got me to think why it didn't work or why in general, like, Content conditioning, that's what we all use, but it seems a lot of people will say corporate care training seems just slow or seems like a little bit boring for them. So that's why I start to, you know, why it's not. I start to think about the whole process. So what we use is classical content conditioning on corporate care. Um, that's the main thing we rely on. So we are pair something that dog doesn't like, either it's a procedure or two with something that dog like, like a food, right? So that's the whole the picture on the right. That's basically the process often looks like. So the dog sees a clipper, the dog has a yummy treats. So hopefully we're changing their feeling about how they feel about clipper and how they feel about nail trim. So the success of classical conditioning often depends on the timing. So the dog notice a trigger or notice something they don't like, notice a tool, and then they get the treats. So it's the tool, the trigger become prediction of the treats. And also you need to repeat many times and also need to break it down to very small steps because if you, let's say the dog is not ready for nail trim yet and you did it, that's what happened with the ear job. And then you, you get kind of burn, uh, burn back the process a lot. And also just the, how much the dog wants a reward. But I feel I did all of this. I was really good kind of planning my training, but why after 30 days, I just not making enough progress as I hoped. And, and at that time, while we're thinking on this, uh, Leslie McDavid, who created the Control and Leash program, who also my mentor on um, become a Control and Leash instructor, asked me to take a video for her webinar. So the setup is asking my dog, uh, the dog is approach a cat, my cat. So that got me to think. So I was thinking, why can I cannot replace the cat with something like copper care related. I can replace the cat with a ear drop bottle or a clipper. So, and then they got me started to think, why don't you use more of control unleashed exercise for 
corporate care training. And I think it will work because corporate care really focuses on like the dog voluntary, the dog initiate the, the process. And also it's a very conversational. We ask a lot of questions during the process of the dog. So how do you really feel? So based on their response, we adjust the ever set, set up. So I think that's what we call is cooperative counter conditioning. So of course there's counter conditioning when changing how they feel about these triggers, these tools, these procedures, but it's not just classical counter conditioning, it's cooperative. So, and then um, as Dr. Susan Friedman said, control is a primary reinforcer. So I think he's sometimes more powerful than food. Um, I haven't said this, but personally I only use most time, majority of time, only use cable for corporate care training um, because I feel I already, I want to focus on the control part. So dog has a control. Um, but yeah, it's nothing wrong to use high level tools. I'm just mentioning that. And I'm thinking just the thing that sometimes the food is maybe not the best reinforcer. Sometimes I think the dog want to feel they're in control. Um, okay, so let's... Uh, Okay, let's get uh, into some of the uh, fun pattern games like I use for um, corporate care. So first one, which everybody's favorite is a one, two, three. So one, two, three is uh, originally used on um, loose leash walking. So instead just mark and reward. So we count one, two, three, and then reward the dog. So think three as a clicker or marker, but we are kind of like, extend the mark mark right so we're counting the dog the dog knows the pattern so the dog knows when we start and one the tree is gonna come and then when ends and three the trees will come and then i use this for a lot of duration um because the copper care needs a lot of duration of behavior that i will give you some examples later and also i want to use this to tell dog what steps i'm gonna do for example I'm going to touch the dog's nail on two when it comes to two or when it comes to three. So there's no surprise. The one just a warning to the dog, I am going to touch you. So I think that helps the dog to feel better. At least I like to be prepared, mentally prepared, what's going to come to me. So how we teach this, uh, we actually teach it backwards. We teach it three first. So we'll just teach three treats. So we say three, give dog treats. Says three give dog treats similar like um, chain, a charge a clicker. So you click give dog treats. And then we add a two. So two, three, and then give dog treats. And then we add a one. So one, two, three, and give dog treats. I will show you the examples that um, that will uh, include the steps, how I teach the step, but how I teach this uh, game to the dog. So this is the one with. Um, use one, two, three for uh, teeth handling. And then I will, I added a subtitle so you can see how I teach the sequence to him.
So one thing I want to point out, this process I adjust. It's not after I teach one, two, three to the dog. Every time I will count one, two, three. I, based on how the dog's response, I might adjust to just count three and then reward the dog. I'll just count two, three, reward the dog. You see, when I first time touch his teeth, uh, when I count one, two, three, he pulled away. So I adjust it to um, not touching his teeth and and they count one, two, three. And then in the end of the session, I adjust the two, just count three or two, three, and I give him treats. Um, so here is another great example, just how to use one, two, three to teach dog duration. Um, so this is a team I work with, Grace and Evelyn. And this dog, um, so they come to me for corporate care training. And this dog, um, She's really smart and she's really fast. She does everything uh, like super fast. It's really hard to get any duration in her. Um, so we work on chain resting at this point for like maybe two, three weeks and then really struggle with duration. So she doesn't leave her chin on her hand at all. We first troubleshoot this by in improving the timing. So to any du duration behavior, timing is really important. The dog have to understand what exactly behavior to get the click, get the mark, get the reward. Then they can start to work on duration. But even with that, it didn't really work very well. So I start to ask them to use one, two, three. You will say this is the first, um, in the beginning, she will just tap. You just teach the sequence, still doesn't work that well yet. Like just the three weeks after. I think before we use one, two, three, about we work on that about two, three weeks, there's not much progress and all, but three weeks after we start to use one, two, three, it's a really great duration. And this is more recent, recent video that Grace is able to use this to cut her hair. Yeah, I think uh, I still remember how excited Grace was when she was first time ever was able to cut her uh, arrowless hair. Um, so here's another example. So I um, I have a lot of trouble to cut my cast nail or even just paw handle in general. He's very sensitive to like uh, touch or especially when I try to hold his paw. So I used the one, two, three, um, Great is to teach the paw handling, and later you will see how I use that to cut his nails. So I started with teaching him three means treats. Cats just a little bit slow, <laughs> take their time. Three. 
So I did two, two, three tricks. Two, three. Add it to one, one, two, three. So this is the actual nail trimming. So you notice I stopped using one, two, three. So I think one, two, three, um, in, depending on the process, it, it can be faded if the dog already understand the duration. Um, but there are some processes that just never really fade one, two, three. I think depends on the process and the dog. So here is the cat, I, I not counting one, two, three um, here. A little bit slow. <laughs> okay, here's um, and then another. I want to show you another use for one, two, three is to um, kind of tell the dog what step going to be. Um, so I got this idea in the beginning of my pregnancy. So I do a lot of tasks, um, and then I found I'm not scared of needle, but I still kind of, but I don't want a low kind of being poked. So I turn my head, but I found that when I'm waiting, the like you know. Uh, waiting to get poked that that waiting seems always very long and I always appreciate that the nurse or technician doctor would let me know when exactly they're going to poke me so I think dogs sometimes they will appreciate that too we take that mental surprise away so they know exactly when what's going to happen to them and then um, I think that helped them so here's the example is I I we can watch a video I forgot exactly how I use this so to touch the skin, touch his ear, and the three clean side of his ear. I think once I'm gonna lift his ear. Um, so this is the first time I um, clean his ear this way. Uh, that's why you'll see it's a little bit slow. I do some counter conditioning with the uh, bottle, just the bottle itself. Great. Um, so yeah, and here's another example is Dremel is nail. Um, I, I can I think I have two videos uh, on different parts. So he's more sensitive on the right part than the left part. So for the left part, I one is a warning and two, three is Dremel his nails. So on the right part, because it's more sensitive one two is warning and three only drama on his nail on three so here's on the left ball one, two, three. Uh, so before I use one, two, three, we worked on Dremel since he was a puppy, but um, both of us never really like it. I don't really like Dremel. I actually prefer Clipper, but the way that I'm starting using Dremel with him now because I cut his quick 
a couple of weeks ago and really scary for me. So I, I started to reuse, uh, rework on the Dremel, but he also didn't really like it. Like it. I think he, he has elbow dysplasia, so it's a little bit sensitive on the touch, the front pulse. So the sensation of the shock, like the, the vibration, he doesn't really like it. But um, once we start using one to three, he really made a lot of progress in really fast time. So here is on the right palm. See the see the paw twitch there. So like is way more sensitive on the right than the left. So adjust it to touch much shorter. Um, I hope you get some ideas for one to three. I think uh, one to three really can be used um, in a lot of different processes in corporate care. Anything that involves some duration um, is a great exercise for that. Uh, here's another game. So ping pong game. Ping pong game is um, you kind of like originally is that like you toss the trees left and right and dog come back to you. It's add some movement and then I use this in corporate care to give the dog some distance. So I let the dog to go away and I, I say that whether the dog wants to come back, which gave me a lot of information about how they really feel. Um, so here, I think this is also mouse handling with the ping pong, but here I only toss trees behind him because the space. So um, let me just show you. So you heard a dog barking there. Um, so this is great because a lot of dogs really like movement. I think it's uh, movement itself is really reinforcing for them. And then we're using distance as additional reinforcer. And we actually give the dog permission to go away from what we're doing. And then, um, a suit. and then you know, whether they come back, how fast they come back can really give us a lot of information. And then we can use this information to adjust uh, um, our training sessions. Okay, here's another great one. So start button. Start button, um, I think you probably heard it um, because a lot of trainers talk about start button behaviors in, in a lot of training, but specifically in corporate care. So start button is you let the dog to initiate the process. So they can choose any behavior. Any behavior can be start button behavior. And then, you know, can be a chin resting, can be a nose touch, can be a lying down, can be even just be come back to you, right? If you toss the trees away, come back. I think that's a pretty good start button behavior. Um, uh, so yeah, and I want to point out is sometimes I say people will say the star button behavior, but they still ask the dog to perform this behavior. Um, you know, I, I would question if there's a really star button because it's cute behavior. Of course, there's always cute because there's the environment the cues all there. We are there holding a tree pouch is cute as well. But I also, I often try to reduce the cueing as much as I can. So I don't verbally cue. I don't uh, like doing hand signal to cue the dog to perform behavior I want to start the process. I want the dog to initiate as much as I can. Um, how to teach this? So people often can, like kind of more, uh, curious about how to teach this. You have to teach this behavior separately and you have to pair it. So you have to ask the dog to perform, for example, chain resting, and then you do the following sequence and then dog get reward. And then after the dog start to understand the chain resting will lead to this, the following 
uh, process, you stop asking and then you say what whether the dog will offer the chain resting. Um, so whether you can say if the that's like the dog asking to start the process. So here we'll give you an example of what do I mean to pay attention to our body cues so we don't cue our dog to perform the behavior. So in this example, um, also nail trimming. So, oh, oh what happened? <laughs> uh, what the slides I was on? Uh, here, great. So the, the ribbon I had a start button behavior is uh, I noticed whenever I cut Nico's nail, he always turned his head. So turning head away could mean stress, but also I feel it could also mean sometimes, for example, like me getting shots. I just don't want to look at it. So I don't know what which one is it. So I want to add a start button behavior. So I want, like if he's not stressed, he will want to start the behavior so he can ask me to cut his nail. But if he's stressed, then he probably wouldn't ask me. So here I say pay attention to the body cues is in the first repetition, you will say I extend my a hand in my hand out like this. That's me asking for a pop. So that's not start button. He didn't initiate, I did. And then later on, I put my hand down on my lap and then I, keep it neutral. And then if he wants to start, he will pop me. And then that's what, it, so I ask like there, let's see if I can, oh, why again? Sorry. <laughs> why? What happened? What happened? Okay, here you go. So now I just put my hand down, keep it neutral. Um, here's another one. So here's the chain resting. Uh, Sunny doesn't really like brush, so br being brushed. So I use chain resting and I, um, to, uh, if he, yeah, as a start button behavior to start the process. So if he lifts his head, actually I reward it. So I think a lot of people tell me they don't and they like to or maybe take them. It's hard to understand why when a dog says no, you still reward. Uh, because I don't want to punish the dog saying no. I think it's valuable information when dog says no. So I always reward. And I will normally ask once, one more time, whether the dog wants to do it. If the dog doesn't want to do it, I will stop the session and try again. Yeah, here again, he lifts his head and reward it. Great. Okay. Um, so here's another game. So request approach training. This is a great way to train, I say, approach a scary thing, any scary thing. Could it be a location? 
by the whole vet office. Vet office is very scary for a lot of dogs because it's a lot of a strong condition, emotional response there. Um, it can be best up, um, dog scared of bed. It can be tooth, um, or it can be even training station tooth, like you know, clipper, Dremel, um, anything copper care related, and can be like you know, just training station, um, because for a while, Nico found training was aversive. So we had to retrain that as well. Um, so they, normally there's two kinds set up. So either it's a scary thing approach to the dog. So the dog gave us dark burning behavior. Either it's chin resting or looking at the uh, handler. You can choose how, what kind of behavior you want. And then the scary thing approach the dog. So the dog gave permissions to say you can get closer. But I really like the other ways. The dog approach the scary thing. You were seeing the following videos that it's out, it's the second one. So because I think this is a gave a dog more control and then just uh, more freedom, then they can tell us how they feel and uh, can be away from the two or place. Um, so here we'll show you two examples. The first one is with the clipper. Um, so this is the I just got this new clipper, so I thought, oh, just let me do some training. Um, before this, he would run away if I just opened the jar that has a clipper in. <laughs> he really knows where I keep them. So if I open the jar, he, like, I don't know where he is, he's gone. Um, so I got this new clipper, he saw it, he saw me put on the chair. He, I think he kind of have a sense what it's for, but not really, because if he really knows this clipper, he probably already gone. So I set this up. I set it three landmarks on the um, so uh, on the floor. Um, so it's very similar to Super Bowl uh, con uh, pattern game. So and each mat, I stop and I um, I wait for him to give my eye contact. Eye contact is his way saying I'm ready to go closer. Then we walk to the next mat. I drop a twist there. I wait there again wait for him to give me eye contact to get closer. Uh, what I found really cool is in the first reputation, you will see we get close to the clipper, he saw it and he's like, no, I don't want, I don't want this. I want to go, I want to leave. So he went away on his own and I reward him there. And then we tried it one more time. And then after that, he's actually much better. So don't be afraid to give dog choice. They can, <laughs> it's really powerful. So eye contact means I'm walking to the next mat. So he's very hesitating, then he walk away. He do some fun tricks. Yeah, he's still scared, you can see his body. Yes. Yes. So yeah, just a few repetitions is already much better. So here's another, um, so here's approaching a location. So. Uh, he's scared of bed. I used to be, I have to put him on a leash and get him to the bathroom if I need to give him bed. And then when I'm getting ready, you know, set up the towels, the water, he will hide it behind the bed, uh, the, the toilet. So I thought, oh, this is a great um, opportunity to try this again. So similar setup just to approach the bath area. <laughs> She's really hard to break. <laughs> So here's also use distance to reward him. So to go away from the scary thing. Oh, I have a storm here. Yeah. 
All right. So this is request approach training. Um, so one thing I got asked a lot is um, people often ask me, for example, the approach to Beth, uh, what's you gonna, how are you gonna do it in real life? Are you gonna, I think if you can do this every single time, let's say take a bath, but you do this with your dog, that's actually most ideal because each time you really get concerned from your dog, right? You really know how your dog feel about when you do these procedures to them. But um, to be honest, I'm not that kind of people. I'm kind of lazy sometimes to just get it done. But good thing is you don't need to. You don't have to ask the dog or do the setups every single time. Because as we talked in the beginning of the presentation, all this is content conditioning still. It's cooperative content conditioning. We just work faster, um, more cooperatively to change how dogs feel. Once how they feel is changed, their behavior change follows. And I will show you some examples, basically some updates from Nico. Uh, remember in the beginning, I talk about how we started this is because I had to get clean the year and then he got really scared. And this is just a couple of months later. Um, so his ear got the itchy again and the instant running away from me, go hide for like, you know, I don't know how long. This time he actually came to me and then he want me to clean his ear. And then this is that, what happened? So I love how relaxed it is right now. Right. So yeah, you know, you don't have to do this, the setup request a pro training or one, two, three or that every single time because their emotion change and then their behavior change follows. Here's another update. So um, I said earlier that he used to run away from clippers. Uh, and this is uh, actually I'm combining um, ping pong game and the star button um, here just a couple of days ago when I cut his nail. Um, I, I think that here, I start button behavior, he choose himself, it's just lying down his back. I actually don't like lying down his back to cut his nail. It's less convenient for me. I like him sitting, it's easier for me. But he chose this one for himself because this is the most relaxing position. And then I definitely not complaining. Um, so here's, um, he see the cleaver, he actually get excited, pretty happy. I tossed the trees away to give him a chance to go away, but he came back to lie down on his own. So, yeah, because we don't have a lot of time, so I'm going to stop there. And then here's another update, um, you know, for best time. Um, I'm not doing a request approach training anymore. I just simply ask him. Good boy. You happy? Ready? You're going to have fun. Okay? Good boy. <laughs> I don't even have a choice with me uh, here. I just... This is right before I gave him a, um, a bath. So yeah, thank you so much. I hope uh, you know some of these games resonate with you and then can give you some ideas to incorporate into uh, own training.
process, uh, you know, a corporate care training. And if you want to find me, you know, you can find me on Instagram, um, uh, TikTok. I don't post much on TikTok anymore, but, uh, you know, my website and my blog. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. So much good information. I'm going to start from the beginning with some of the questions. I know you don't have a ton of time. So one of the first questions was with things like teaching one, two, three, do you first teach the behavior sort of separately on its own to fluency before you start using it in cooperative care? Oh uh, yeah, that's a great question. Um, actually you can do it either way. So I work with dog, never learned one, two, three before and just learned one, two, three in corporate care. They work out great. And I also have dogs that already kind of know one, two, three for leash walking, but then we're teaching the one, two, three in new contacts in corporate care. They also work out great. I think you just have to take time to really teach the, this either new or not new, uh, you know, um, concept of, to the dog. I will always start with three and a gradual work to one, two, three. Awesome. Another question was about one, two, three, when you're doing things like a chin rest, where you're asking them to hold, uh, hold a position, are you using three as the release cue or are you using three as a sort of a duration marker? Um, good question. I guess that's duration marker. Just imagine three as a clicker, right? So when, what time you're going to click? So are you click when the dog chin's still on your hand or do you click when the dog leave, like release? So I would say that's probably duration marker in that sense. Okay. Uh, but usually when you say three, is that the dog's cute that they can lift their head back yeah, up? Yeah, they can lift it because we're kind of giving them tweets. Yes. Awesome. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Another question someone had, which is one of my questions also. So if you're doing a start button with something like giving a paw for nail trims, what do you do when the dog always gives you the same paw? How do you get to the other paw or the back paws? Right. I think you have to work on that separately. Um, so yes. So in the beginning, you know, if the dog keep giving you the same paw, um, uh, in the beginning, all start button behavior have to be taught, right? So we have to teach the dog this behavior separately and then teach, the, te then teach them what this lead to, right? This lead, could lead to a nail cut. And then once they understand that, and then they become star button behavior, right? Um, but like, if they keep giving me a same paw after a while, I'm gonna cue another paw to see how they feel because I most likely, if they're okay with cutting one nail on one paw, they're most likely okay cutting another paw unless there's some pain on, you know, on the other limb, but, Otherwise, normally it's just a habit. Some dog is left-handed, some dog right-handed. So I will cue another paw and then cue a couple of times and then stop and then to see what they do. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Somebody asked, where can they watch more of your videos for things like the nail clipping? Uh, yeah, I post all these videos on my Instagram. So you can, uh, let's see, <laughs> can find me on Instagram. Um, I should get better at posting on YouTube, but uh, sometimes I just lazy and forgot. <laughs> but yeah, um, I haven't put my YouTube there. But yeah, you basically you can find my YouTube link on my Instagram link. There's a, a file in my bio. There's the link there as well. Awesome. There's a lot of stuff on her Instagram. If you have not checked it out, it is a wealth of stuff. Also, if you're into dog fitness stuff, it's really cool. Lots of, lots of interesting things on there. Thank you. Um, for folks who are not, uh, not super well versed in co um, control unleashed, can you give us like the top three things people should know about control unleashed in general? Mm, that's a great question. Um, I think it's a conversational and then it's, now this, and then the pattern game is very predictable. Um, and then um, voluntary, like the dog really have really emphasized on the start button behavior that the dog initiated all this pattern game. So, um, and then the repeatable, the, the predictable part, they really have the dog to, uh, you know, to know what's going to come to understand the process. That's why it's, used to, it works so well in like reactive dog training, aggressive dog training, behavior modification in general. And also I found a corporate gear as well. Awesome. Okay. So for everyone on here that's going, oh my gosh, we're really excited. We've learned so much. Where do we start? Do you have any suggestions on the best place for folks to start with all of this? Uh, 
That's a great question. I would say, um, I was I would really encourage everyone to also start like let's say thirty days cooperate care self challenge, and I think you can make a plan. Let's say thirty days, either just run, work on one thing or two things. You don't have to do it every day. I think you do it every day. Sometimes like. It, you don't have like a lot of time in between to think about the process. You just, let's say you finish it in like two months, 30 days, 30 sessions, short sessions. And then, you know, work on something that you always want to work on. And then, you know, this time you give yourself, like, I have this much, this many sessions, I can, like I'm committed, I'm not going to work on that. And then um, just let you help you get started. And once it becomes a habit, and once you start to see the progress, and once you see a dog love the, the process, it's much easier just to keep going. I think um, keep, continue doing it is hard, right? It kind of like all, all training, <laughs> like have the motivation to keep going. Um, so I really encourage everyone to do that. And I, I do think I have a hashtag of <laughs> hashtag 30 days corporate care challenge and also another hashtag on Instagram um a uh, corporate care unleashed uh, so I think maybe uh, folks can find some information there as well to follow others awesome thank you so much okay upcoming webinars include uh, helping the under-socialized dog. We've got one from Karishma War about managing your walks and then a Control Unleashed Foundations from Angie Madden is coming up as well. So lots of cool webinars coming up at everydogaustin.org slash webinars. Again, if you like what we're doing, please consider making a donation. We also have cool t-shirts on our website um, and we would love to hear from you about things that you want to see from us in the future. So please reach out, um, check out Dr. Lin, Lin on Instagram and hang out with us there. If you have any questions or need anything, you have her contact information, you can reach out to us anytime. Again, thanks to Maddie's Fund for sponsoring this webinar and all of our speaker series. And we look forward to seeing the rest of you next time. Yeah. Have a good night, so everyone. Much, thank you so yes, much. Thank you, Lauren. <laughs> bye. Yeah, bye.